I see patients every day for lower back pain. Sometimes by the time they get to see me, things are so bad that there's only so many things we can do. Today I'm gonna to talk about the five ways to slow the degenerative process of the discs. Some things like age, genetics, and trauma are non-modifiable risk factors for wear and tear in the discs. The discs play an important role in the stability of the spine. As there's wear and tear in the discs, that puts more pressure on the joints, which can lead to degenerative changes in the joints and arthritis. Also, as the discs wear out, they're at risk for herniating, which can then impinge on nerves and cause nerve damage. Maintaining healthy discs allows for good movement of the spine, and it also helps to uh, avoid those other complications with the facet joint arthritis and nerve damage. Here's the first way to minimize the degenerative process of the discs, is to stop smoking. Smoking can cause vasoconstriction and restrict blood flow to the small blood vessels in the body. The discs receive their nutrients through passive diffusion from the small blood vessels in the end plates of the vertebral bodies. So in smoking, that can constrict those blood vessels and make it a little bit harder for the micronutrients to get to the discs. All right, number two is to offload the disc. One of the known risk factors for degenerative disc disease is obesity. So if we're able to decrease weight and normalize our BMI, that would help take pressure off the discs and help slow the degenerative process. So another way to offload the discs is when we lie down at night, that takes pressure off the discs. So throughout the day as we're upright, that pressure on the discs, that causes some of the water to leave the discs. And during the night while we're lying down, loss of pressure on the discs allows those discs to rehydrate to a certain degree. So there's some folks that sleep in a recliner and when they do that, they, they miss out on some of that opportunity for those discs to rehydrate as fully as they could. All right, number three is good biomechanics. And we're talking both for posture and for lifting. The reasoning behind good posture is twofold. First, it encourages proper strength to maintain that posture. And that helps maintain proper alignment of the spine. And second, when people slouch, they often sit back, say in a couch, and they're in this relaxed position. And usually as they slouch back into the couch, they stop relying on the muscles to support the spine and rely more on the ligaments. Not a big deal in the short term, but you add up five, 10, 20 years, and those ligaments can get a little bit stretched out. And now the supportive structures of the ligaments of the spine are looser and weaker than they should be. And that puts extra strain on things like the discs. Then with good lifting technique, that can help minimize the risk of injury by lifting properly and putting less strain on things like the supportive ligaments and the lumbar spine, uh, which can then lead to uh, injuries to the discs. All right, number four is exercise. There are three key elements to this. The first thing is mobility through things like stretches and exercises like yoga that can help improve and maintain the proper mobility of the pelvis and the spine, and that helps take pressure off certain parts of the spine. For example, if the hamstrings, if they get super tight, that often puts a little extra stress on the discs and the ligaments as you do things like bending and lifting. Now the second is core strengthening and strengthening the supportive muscles of the spine. So things like strengthening the abdominals, the spinal muscles, and the gluteal muscles, those can help uh, stabilize and support the spine. And the third part is the aerobic exercise. So as you do aerobic exercise, your heart rate increases, it increases the perfusion of the body. So what happens is certain blood vessels dilate, like the blood vessels in the, in the muscle, the skin, the heart, the brain, and the spine. So by dilating those blood vessels and increasing the perfusion of blood through those, that can also help get blood flow going to those areas like the discs that don't have great blood flow. And that can help optimize that passive diffusion of nutrients from the, the vertebral end plate to the discs. One side note, uh, pro tip, 15 to 20 minutes of aerobic exercise, zone two exercise in the morning is a good way to get blood flowing to the brain good way to wake you up, eliminate that brain fog. All right, and lastly, number five, this is intradiscal injection of orthobiologics. This is an emerging field within regenerative medicine where there's a lot of different things that are being studied and looked at for maintaining the quality of the discs. There's been studies on platelet-rich plasma, uh, bone marrow aspirate, and there's a couple other studies in the works looking at different types of discogenic cells for the treatment of degenerative disc disease. Often we're not looking at this type of a procedure until someone is demonstrating some uh, disc-related pain. So there's many studies ongoing regarding these types of treatments. So a little bit more time will tell what the best treatment options are for these, but these are available to patients if they're suffering from disc-related pain. There are some studies that are smaller 
that have shown that uh, there may be some improvement in the quality of the disc and the amount of fluid in the disc. We're not at the point yet where we're taking a severely degenerative disc and normalizing that disc. All right, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time.